The Con Toolbox will generate many different graphs automatically, one for each of the ROIs you specified in the Setup tab, which are populated here. These connectivity maps depict the correlation between each ROI and the rest of the brain in the Seed to Voxel Maps tab, as well as the correlation between each ROI with every other ROI in the brain, which can be found in the ROI to ROI tab. For the condition and C that you highlight, a corresponding second level map will be displayed on the right side of the con window. The results are, by default, displayed on axial slices at an uncorrected p-value of 0 0.001, which you can change if you want. And the color bar to the left represents the strength of the t-statistic. Hovering the mouse over the voxels displays the t-statistic and p-value for the contrast highlighted in the subject effects window, and clicking on a voxel generates a bar plot showing the strength of the contrast estimate. The results preview panel includes more options for viewing the results. Clicking on the plot subjects button, for example, gives you the option of displaying the results for each subject in a montage. Note how the group level result represents the strength of the overlap between the individual subject maps. You may have wondered why the right window pane says results preview when it appears that we have generated our group level results. The map has not actually been written to the disk yet. We will do that by clicking on the results explorer button here. I've already done it, so I'm going to load existing analysis results. After a few moments, another window opens up, giving you more options for viewing the results in different orientations for example, on different surfaces. The window can be divided into three parts. One, the threshold panel up here. Two, the display panel over here. And three, the coordinates panel down here. The threshold panel allows you to set a threshold if you choose the advanced family-wise error control settings. These other defaults will work fine for most purposes, but if you wanna see what goes on under the hood, you can select this customize option here. For example, voxel-wise threshold specifies the cluster forming threshold or how significant a voxel needs to be to be considered part of a cluster. The field below it, cluster threshold, sets the threshold of which clusters will be displayed. In other words, this is your alpha threshold. The menus next to the voxel threshold and cluster threshold fields specify which kind of correction mechanism to use. For example, switching from P uncorrected to FTX stat allows you to specify a T statistic instead of a P threshold. Likewise, the cluster threshold can be changed from an FDR threshold to FWE or even uncorrected. The last pair of menus specify whether the tests are one-sided or two-sided and whether to use parametric or non-parametric methods for correction. If you want to use a correction method that does not depend on parametric assumptions, such as normality, change parametric stats to non-parametric stats. This will prompt you to select a number of simulations, and in general, around 5,000 simulations is recommended. The display panel shows the results by default on a glass brain. The buttons on the right side of the panel allow you to visualize the results in different ways. For example, the button in the upper left part of the panel will display the results on an inflated brain, almost as though it's on a surface. Whereas the button here will display it on a typical cortical map. The other buttons are relatively straightforward to use, such as displaying the results on individual slices. The last button we will discuss here is the button that says SPM. This will load the results into the SPM Contrast Manager, which can then be thresholded and viewed using the SPM interface. For more details on how to do this, see the link down below. The bottom panel shows the coordinates for each cluster that passes the thresholds specified above. Clicking on each set of coordinates will highlight a cluster by slightly darkening it. 
These coordinates can then be reported in a table as significant results, given your thresholds. Close the Results Explorer window, and then click on the ROI to ROI tab. This also displays functional connectivity results, but at a different resolution. Instead of a whole brain connectivity map, we only see ROIs that are significantly correlated with other ROIs. The options for selecting different contrasts are the same as for the C to voxel results. The red lines indicate which ROIs are significantly correlated with the selected seed, and blue lines indicate significantly negative correlations. More or fewer axial slices can be displayed by clicking on the up and down arrows here. Clicking on each of the nodes in the results pane will display a bar chart showing the size of the effect for that ROI to ROI correlation, and clicking on the display 3D button will show a transparent brain with all of the nodes overlaid on it. The ROI to ROI results allows you to see in more detail how nodes of certain networks are correlated with other nodes in the brain. Scroll down to Seeds, Sources menu, and then Network, Salience, ACC, and click on it. This uses a node within the anterior cingulate cortex as a seed and correlates it with all of the other ROIs in the brain. Now click on the Results Explorer button to open a new results window. This will display the significant connections or correlations between the nodes as a connectome ring. The salience.acc node in the lower right hand corner over here, for example, is connected through curved lines to other nodes. If you want, you can restrict the number of nodes you are testing by going to the menu Analysis of these number of connections among 164 ROIs. And then for example, simply highlight a subset of nodes. The connectome ring will then update, only showing those nodes that you selected. Each time you press the Results Explorer button, results were generated and output in the directory structure that Khan automatically created as part of your project. If you go back to your MATLAB terminal, for example, you will find that you have been moved to a folder called Khan Arithmetic Project Results Second Level SBC01 All Subjects Rest FP Frontal Pole Underscore R. This contains the results you were just looking at in the GUI. If you type LS, you should see the following. These are the images loaded by the Khan GUI when you look at the results. The file SPMT0001 for example, shows the correlation to t-statistic map that was created for the node you selected. You can open it up in any other software package, such as AFNI or FSL. The beta maps are Fisher Z-transformed images that can be used with any other software package, such as AFNI or SPM. After you've run your first and second level analysis, you will also have a directory called Results First Level. Let's navigate to that folder. If we go into SBC01, just like in the second level directory, you will see a list of beta images, one for each source or ROI that you specified for each subject. And these are Fisher R to Z transformed images that you can use in another program such as SPM or AFNI or FSL if you want to run a group level analysis in those toolboxes. You will also find that it contains several .mat files, one per subject, which in turn contain a connectivity matrix for each ROI to ROI Fisher transformed Z value. You can load this by typing in MATLAB, for example, load results ROI subject 01 condition 01. After doing that, you will see a variable called Z in your workspace. If you type Z, this is a connectivity matrix for every pair of ROIs that you specified in the Setup tab. You can find out which column corresponds to which ROI by typing Names and pressing Enter. You can then extract the connectivity values for each pair of ROIs you're interested in. For example, let's say this one. 
Enter these values into a statistical software program, such as SPSS or R, and perform an analysis on them. That's it for viewing the results. We now move on from resting state data to task-related data using a process called psychophysiological interactions. All that and more in the next video.